Picture yourself confronted with life's most formidable trials, loss, agony, ambiguity, and yet discovering the resilience to transcend them. Not merely enduring, but flourishing amidst adversity. This narrative isn't confined to bygone eras or neglected doctrines, it pertains to a contemporary revelation with the potential to revolutionize your existence today. I speak of Stoicism, a philosophical doctrine imbued with the potency to transmute your tribulations into triumphs and your apprehensions into valor. It's not a panacea, but a mode of existence capable of guiding you through the labyrinth of modernity with poise and sagacity. Contemplate this, amidst a world ceaselessly nudging you towards insatiable desires and instant gratifications, what if I disclosed that the essence of true contentment lies in embracing simplicity, cultivating gratitude, and directing your focus towards what lies within your dominion. This isn't just another fad in the realm of self-improvement, it's a venerable, battle-tested philosophy harnessed by eminent leaders, thinkers, and even sovereigns to orchestrate lives of significance. So, if you've ever experienced disorientation, inundation, or simply harbored a curiosity about the art of virtuous living, stay with me. Let us delve into the depths of Stoicism, and unveil the clandestine pathways to a gratifying existence, enigmas left behind by luminaries such as Marcus Aurelius, Seneca, and Epictetus. Believe me, their wisdom endures. Prioritize human welfare. This expedition could mark the pivotal moment you've long sought. I implore you, refrain from bypassing any segment of this discourse. If you're present here, consider yourself distinct from the mainstream, an outlier. Act in accordance with this distinction, and immerse yourself fully in the content. In a world fixated on quantifying success by possessions rather than contributions, Marcus Aurelius emerges as an emblem of genuine leadership. Envision holding the pinnacle of power in the known world, where opulence and indulgence beckon effortlessly. Yet, when confronted with one of history's most dire crises, a pandemic threatening vast swathes of his empire, Marcus charted a course divergent from conventional expectations. Rather than retreating into the opulence of his palace, ensconced in wealth and comfort, he embarked on a bold and humble endeavor. He commenced divesting himself of possessions, treasures not merely valuable but emblematic of imperial might, and divine stature. This gesture transcended symbolism, it served as a lifeline to a society teetering on the brink of survival, a populace seeking not just governance but empathy and optimism. This act of selflessness epitomizes Stoicism in practice. Stoicism, a doctrine extolling the virtues of wisdom, courage, justice, and temperance, wasn't a mere theoretical framework for Marcus, it was his modus vivendi. By prioritizing the welfare of his constituents over personal comfort, Marcus epitomized the Stoic principle that genuine wealth isn't accrued through possessions but by leading a life of virtue and service to others. Yet, Marcus Aurelius wasn't solitary in championing these ideals. Consider Aristotle, who posited that genuine happiness resides in virtuous living, in harmonizing with reason, and contributing to the community. Plato, too, underscored the significance of the philosopher king, a sovereign guided by sagacity and rectitude, placing the needs of the state, and its denizens above personal desires. Prioritizing humanity, particularly during crises, transcends mere material assistance, it offers hope, solidarity, and fosters a sense of shared humanity. This epitomizes the essence of leadership exemplified by Marcus Aurelius, a leadership founded not on authority or intimidation but on empathy, sacrifice, and an unwavering dedication to the collective welfare. Have you ever felt ensnared in an impasse, where every avenue appears futile? It's a pervasive sentiment, one that can engender frustration, despair, and a sense of stagnation. Yet, what if I disclosed that this sentiment, as ubiquitous as it may seem, is but a momentary illusion? An alternative path, always beckons. The sagacity of Marcus Aurelius illuminates a profound verity, when one avenue closes, another unveils itself. 
Marcus, alongside fellow Stoic luminaries like Seneca and Epictetus, imparted the wisdom that life teems with impediments, yet these obstacles are not terminuses but gateways to growth, redirection, and the revelation of untrodden paths. At its core, Stoicism underscores the comprehension that while we may lack dominion over external events, our response to these occurrences remains within our grasp. This Stoic precept revolutionizes our outlook, urging us to perceive obstacles not as cul-de-sacs but as avenues for redirection. It beckons us to embrace the notion that an alternative course always exists, a path replete with its challenges, demanding fortitude, creativity, and the cultivation of latent talents. Reflecting on the insights of other Western philosophical and psychological giants further elucidates this principle. Aristotle's notion that the essence of art lies not in superficial appearances but in intrinsic significance resonates, with the Stoic perception of obstacles. It posits that our experience is not defined by external hurdles but by the meaning we attribute to them and the actions we undertake in response. Socrates, through his Socratic method of inquiry, prompts us to interrogate our assumptions regarding the obstacles we confront. By scrutinizing our beliefs, we unearth concealed paths and solutions obscured by our initial reactions and emotions. The Stoic admonition that another path always awaits transcends mere problem-solving, it underscores that life's trials are integral facets of our odyssey. They sculpt, challenge, and ultimately propel us towards our zenith. It serves as a reminder that in life, agency persists not in what befalls us but in how we elect to respond. In the ceaseless cycle of planning and pondering, Marcus Aurelius imparts a fundamental verity with exquisite simplicity, knowledge bereft of action is hollow. Intentions and blueprints hold little sway without tangible strides towards their realization. Procrastination emerges as the nemesis of progress. This ethos of decisive action is not merely about harboring intentions or concocting schemes, it entails the concerted endeavor to materialize those aspirations. In essence, embracing the belief that an alternative path beckons is more than a cognitive shift, it is a call to action, a testament to the transformative power of Stoic wisdom in navigating life's labyrinthine journey. Embrace incremental progress. The ethos of advancing gradually towards our aspirations epitomizes the essence of Stoicism. Stoics advocated for living in harmony with nature, which encompasses acknowledging our capacity as rational beings capable of not just contemplating, but also executing plans. Marcus Aurelius, beyond being a philosopher, bore the mantle of an emperor, a leader tasked with decisions impacting millions. His counsel emanates from a wellspring of experience, reminding us that the path to realizing our potential is paved with actions, not solely thoughts. Yet, how do we surmount the inertia that impedes our progress? How do we transition from ideation to execution? The Stoic principle of disciplined action offers guidance, commence modestly, but commence today. This tenet finds resonance in the teachings of other eminent philosophers and psychologists. Aristotle's renowned aphorism, we are what we repeatedly do, excellence, then, is not an act but a habit, underscores the potency of consistent, incremental strides towards our objectives. It underscores that our character and lives are shaped not by grand gestures, but by the cumulative impact of our daily deeds. Plato, through his dialogues, emphasized the alignment of actions with values and ideals. He posited that authentic knowledge engenders right action, aligning with Stoic emphasis on virtuous living guided by reason. By undertaking steps congruent with our loftiest aspirations, we draw closer to the flourishing existence Plato envisioned. Taking it step by step, as Marcus Aurelius counsels, entails embracing the journey of self-improvement with fortitude and persistence. It involves acknowledging that every significant odyssey commences with a single step. Whether endeavoring to enhance our well-being, pen a literary opus, or contribute to a better world, the crux lies in initiation and steadfast progression, one step at a time. In the quietude of life's interludes, when the clamor of existence fades, we confront our ruminations, emotions, and often, anxieties. 
It was during such moments that Marcus Aurelius made a profound revelation, anxiety emanates not from external circumstances, but from within. This insight, central to Stoic philosophy, underscores that genuine tranquility stems from inner equilibrium, an understanding that resilience and serenity amidst life's vicissitudes are cultivated inwardly, ultimately leading to a state of profound peace. Release the shackles of anxiety. In the realm of Stoicism, anxiety is perceived as a choice. It encourages a focus on what lies within our sphere of influence. While external events may elude our control, Stoics maintain that mastery over our thoughts, perceptions, and reactions is within our grasp. This perspective empowers us to shed superfluous worries and cultivate inner tranquility, irrespective of external tumult. But how do we embody this teaching in practical terms? How do we relinquish anxiety, and unearth genuine liberation? Primarily, it requires an acknowledgement that anxiety often emanates from our futile attempts to control the uncontrollable, from fretting over the future to fixating on external perceptions. Marcus Aurelius reminds us that such concerns reside beyond our dominion and, therefore, should not disturb our equanimity. Plato underscores the significance of self-knowledge, positing that genuine enlightenment leads to mastery of oneself. By comprehending our thoughts and emotions, we discern the origins of our anxiety and address them with rationality and clarity. Socrates advocates for the examined life, contending that unreflective existence is devoid of value. By scrutinizing our anxieties, we challenge their validity and reshape our relationship with them. Discarding anxiety, as espoused by the Stoics, necessitates a paradigm shift. It entails relinquishing attachment to the vicissitudes beyond our control and directing our focus inward, on our responses. This doesn't entail suppression of emotions, but rather observing them with detachment and choosing not to let them dictate our inner peace. Commencing the day with purpose lays the groundwork for subsequent endeavors. Marcus Aurelius epitomized this ethos, despite his myriad responsibilities. He adhered to routines that grounded him and imbued each day with intentionality. His practice of journaling served not just as a tool for reflection, but as a means to align actions with values. The maxim well begun is half done underscores the significance of commencing tasks, projects, and indeed, days, in a manner conducive to success. It encapsulates the importance of deliberate beginnings, a practice that fosters clarity, purpose, and resilience in the face of life's vicissitudes. The principle of well begun is half done transcends epochs, resonating in the wisdom of countless philosophers and psychologists. Aristotle extolled the potency of habits in sculpting character and shaping lives, asserting that excellence isn't an isolated act, but a habitual pursuit. By commencing each day with routines emblematic of our commitment to excellence, we nurture habits conducive to virtuous and fulfilling living. It's the accumulation of small, consistent actions that defines us, not grand gestures. Plato introduced the concept of the world of forms, wherein the ideal essence of everything resides. While attaining this ideal may elude us, the pursuit thereof brings forth our finest attributes. Initiating our day with clear intention mirrors orienting ourselves toward our own ideal form, striving daily to embody the best versions of ourselves. Navigating the path of self-improvement necessitates a delicate equilibrium, between compassion for others and discipline for oneself, a balance epitomized in the teachings of Marcus Aurelius. He underscored the importance of being lenient with others while maintaining strictness with oneself, encapsulating the essence of self-discipline. This stoic tenet impels us to assume accountability for our actions, thoughts, and growth, devoid of undue imposition of expectations onto others. Self-discipline manifests as a solitary odyssey, a personal commitment to upholding higher standards, fostering self-control, and incessantly pursuing self-improvement. It isn't about setting unrealistic benchmarks or adopting a harsh, unforgiving stance toward oneself, but rather acknowledging our capacity for growth and earnestly endeavoring to inch closer to our ideal selves daily.
Marcus Aurelius epitomized this ethos through his introspective reflections chronicled in his meditations, illustrating a profound dedication to self-examination, virtue, and the pursuit of wisdom. He recognized that genuine progress emanates from within, emphasizing our capacity to cultivate inner peace, virtue, and resilience through disciplined thought and action. This stoic ethos of self-discipline serves as a beacon, guiding us toward a life marked by purpose, integrity, and continual growth. The notion of being strict with oneself reverberates in the teachings of numerous eminent philosophers and psychologists. Aristotle expounded on virtue as a mean between two extremes obtainable through habitual practice. He contended that by consistently opting for the virtuous path, one could cultivate a character characterized by excellence. Applied to self-discipline, this entails striking a balance between excess and deficiency, pushing oneself to grow while remaining cognizant of personal limitations. Being strict with oneself, as advocated by Marcus Aurelius, doesn't entail punishment or deprivation. Rather, it involves holding oneself to elevated standards, acknowledging the capacity for improvement, and undertaking requisite actions to realize one's potential. It entails making choices that resonate with core values, even when they necessitate sacrifice or effort. Simultaneously, Marcus's counsel to be lenient with others underscores the significance of empathy, understanding, and compassion. It acknowledges the unique journeys, challenges, and lessons of every individual, fostering not just self-discipline, but also appreciation for diverse paths in human relationships. Navigating encounters with challenging individuals is an inevitable facet of existence, one that can strain patience and disrupt peace. However, Marcus Aurelius offers a transformative perspective on this predicament. He perceived difficult individuals not merely as obstacles but as opportunities to embody stoic virtues such as patience, kindness, and understanding. This approach transcends external dynamics, representing an internal journey toward personal growth and mastery. Stoicism underscores that our reactions to external stimuli, including interactions with others, lie within our control. Marcus Aurelius emphasized that external actions should not disturb our inner equilibrium or dictate our emotional state. Instead, encounters with difficult individuals serve as occasions to fortify character, manifest stoic virtues, and transcend trivial grievances. This approach doesn't entail condoning negative behavior or tolerating mistreatment. Rather, it involves selecting responses aligned with values and a commitment to personal excellence. Carl Jung's concept of the shadow self further elucidates this dynamic, suggesting that traits disapproved of in others often mirror aspects of oneself. Thus, navigating encounters with challenging individuals offers not just external challenges but opportunities for internal introspection and growth. Resenting individuals often stems from aspects within ourselves that we haven't fully embraced. By acknowledging this projection, we transform encounters with challenging individuals into opportunities for introspection and personal growth. Learning to embrace the entirety of our humanity, Marcus Aurelius's approach advocates not for harboring resentment but for viewing such interactions as arenas to exercise stoic virtues. It beckons us to elevate our responses beyond immediate impulses of resentment, fostering patience, kindness, and understanding. This path not only fosters more harmonious relationships but also cultivates a deeper, more virtuous life. In our contemporary milieu inundated with ceaseless demands and distractions, Marcus Aurelius's inquiry into the essential becomes not just pertinent, but imperative. It prompts us to pause, reflect, and discern the essence amidst the clamor, a compass guiding us towards a life imbued with purpose and significance. Marcus championed the ethos of prioritizing what truly matters, advocating for a life guided not by external chaos but by internal values. This stoic principle of essentialism and focus on the fundamental resonates as a potent tool for navigating the complexities of modern existence. The wisdom of concentrating on the essential reverberates through the annals of Western philosophy and psychology. 
Aristotle's notion of the golden mean, the desirable middle ground between extremes, echoes this sentiment, emphasizing the pursuit of balance and moderation in all aspects of life. Asking oneself, is this essential? Echoes the principle of finding balance between excess and efficiency in daily choices and commitments. It steers us away from overcommitment or apathy, guiding us towards activities essential for our fulfillment and well-being. Plato underscored the pursuit of the good, the true, and the beautiful, ideals that should inform our actions. By questioning the essence of our endeavors, we align our lives with these higher ideals, ensuring our actions contribute to our ultimate goals of wisdom, virtue, and beauty. Carl Jung's exploration of the human psyche emphasized individuation, the process of becoming one's true self. Concentrating on what is essential enables us to shed societal expectations and superficial desires, drawing us closer to our authentic selves and the unique path each of us is meant to tread. Amar Fati, the love of one's fate, exhorts us to embrace life's vicissitudes with acceptance and enthusiasm, rather than resistance or lamentation. It teaches us to perceive challenges as necessary parts of our journey, mirroring Marcus Aurelius's acceptance and optimal utilization of adverse circumstances during his reign. This stoic maxim resonates with Aristotle's teaching that virtue and happiness lie not in external conditions but in the acceptance and virtuous pursuit of one's life circumstances. Stoicism underscores our social nature, urging us to embrace both the joys and challenges of communal existence. By adopting an attitude of acceptance and embracing life's full spectrum, we cultivate resilience, wisdom, and inner peace amid life's ebbs and flows. Remember these mantras. 1. Community well-being, our own well-being is intricately tied to that of our community. Focusing on contributing to the common good means recognizing our interconnectedness and our responsibility to each other. It's a call to ethical living, positive societal contribution, and consideration of the impact of our actions on others. Plato's ideal society, where each individual fulfills their role for the greater good, embodies this stoic value. It underscores that genuine fulfillment arises not from self-centered pursuits but from enriching the lives of others. 2. Memento Mori, reflecting on our mortality through the practice of Memento Mori isn't morbid, rather, it serves as a powerful motivator to live fully, prioritize what truly matters, and release trivial concerns. Marcus Aurelius and Stoics at large view awareness of death as a means to cherish life, and seize the present moment. This perspective aligns with Socrates' belief that an unexamined life lacks value, implying that living without awareness of life's finite nature leads to emptiness. These mantras encapsulate profound Stoic insights, urging us to lead lives of purpose, contribution, and appreciation for the fleeting beauty of existence. The awareness of death serves as a tool to cherish life and seize the present moment, a perspective shared by Socrates, who deemed an unexamined life as devoid of depth and meaning, emphasizing the importance of awareness of life's finitude. Integrating these stoic mantras into our lives beckons us to live with greater purpose, resilience, and joy. Embracing memento mori encourages acceptance and finding value in all experiences, transforming challenges into opportunities for growth. Focusing on contributing to the common good extends our pursuit of happiness beyond personal needs, enriching our lives through the well-being of others. Memento mori serves as a poignant reminder to focus on essentials, love deeply, act kindly, and live meaningfully, cognizant of our finite time. Remember, life's journey is replete with challenges and beauty, and how we navigate it defines our existence. Let's not merely exist but truly live, embracing past wisdom to craft a present filled with meaning and a future brimming with possibility. If this message resonates with you, I encourage further exploration through the suggested videos, continuing your journey into wisdom, resilience and fulfillment. Together, let's tread the path of virtue guided by the timeless light of Stoic wisdom. Thank you for being part of Stoic Journal, and until next time, keep fortifying your inner fortress.